Welcome to the guide on how to use custom-made SC LoRa's on Automatic 1111. We start off by putting the LoRa's in the designated local folder, then straight away launch SD and set up the base model for them to work with. They will be combined with the previously made SC base models, specifically the Space Engineers Props 5000. Another option is using Product Design Model from Civitei. For the example, we add a SE block reference in a blockout phase to ControlNet and mainly use one of these two control types, Depth or Line Art. In this case, we're using Depth together with its 1.5 version model because all of the LoRa's are created based on 1.5 SD model. It's better to use a low control weight because it doesn't restrict the style and allows it to generate interesting shapes and decals. Make sure you set the size to 1024 to 1024 pixels and feel free to experiment with any of these sampling methods. Set it to about 30 steps or higher, and now we can add the previously added LoRa's to the text prompt. There are three styles that slightly vary from one another, and they all work uniquely in different cases. Just like adding weight to a specific text prompt, you can do the same with the LoRa's. I usually set it to about 0.5 to 0.7, but even going more than one can give out interesting results in some cases. Finally, make sure that you add digital hard surface concept art style on the beginning or the end of the description, as it's the callout label upon which the LoRa's are trained on. Then we proceed with adding a standard description of what we want to generate. You don't need to write anything more than five to six phrases, but you can add things like a desired material color, some specific feature like a vent, or to exclude a noisy background in the negative prompt. Let's generate. In this case, it didn't impact the material color. For this, I suggest trying out different CFG scales. In general, the depth mask is less precise, but allows for more creative generations by adding new shapes, which might inspire you to include in your 3D model. Up next, we are going to try another example by using the line art control type. This type generates outcomes which are more strictly tied to the mask, and it's more useful for simply rendering out sketches which don't need a lot of changes. Following the same principles as before, we're setting the control weight below 1, and the preprocessor is set to line art realistic though any of the first three work fine. Then simply repeat the process. Click on any of the three LoRa's, set the weight, and add your custom description on how you want it rendered. You can see that with a slightly adjusted CFG scale, it already gives out the desired material colors and features based on the description. The last example showcases that the depth control type can be used not only with blockout references, but also for sketched ones, where it would again produce interesting new shapes onto your existing idea. This goes also for all the control models, so feel free to experiment with any control type, weight, and their parameters. Lastly, note that these particular LoRa's are trained on the SD 1.5 base models, so you could also experiment with any of the thousand compatible models you find on Civitai.com. I hope you enjoyed this guide and proves useful for your need to create.